Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy writes an outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. He publishes it with issues every Monday and updates when warranted. Today's a great day to sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, folks, because not only are currencies running so much in this market as usual, but Teddy's got a webinar tonight, 4 till 5, a 60-minute webinar. It'll be live. It's taking place in our Discord room. All subscribers gain access. If you can't attend live, it will be archived as well up on your members page tomorrow. You subscribe for 30 days, folks. You still get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, I'm looking forward to the webinar tonight. It's a special time in this market, man, with everything going on. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, where do you want to start, Teddy, man? Uh, first, let's give the listeners and the viewers a little bit of a glimpse, if you can, about what you're going to be talking about tonight for the hour with subscribers to the Tiger Forex Report at 4 o'clock Eastern time, Teddy. Uh, well, we're going to talk about, uh, obviously, the major for, uh, Forex currency pairs. We're also going to talk about yields. We're talking about crude oil, the dollar index, and also the f upcoming Fed meeting, and uh, basically how I put the newsletter together every week. Well, you know, what, I, what, do I, what are my ways of putting my outlooks on each market and in any given you know, situation? So that's what we're going to do is we're going to basically do a walkthrough of how I break down things when I put the newsletter together, especially when I'm not thinking about just the next day, but actually what's going to happen over the next week or so. I, I can't wait for it, man. I'm going to be in that room for sure. And listen, we, if folks, if you've been following the program, Teddy's has some great calls, whether it's talking about the dollar index, whether it's talking about crude in particular that shapes so much of what's going on. Um, and Teddy, maybe we started off with the dollar index because I always read your letter on Monday, man. I read um, to check it out because just like we talk about, things are so important right now with yields, with currencies driving so much of the action and the dollar's got a little bit of a pullback uh and maybe give the the viewers the listeners because that was kind of right near maybe a potential correction zone and how you look at that dollar index mm -hmm. and what you're looking as we kick things off can we do that yeah, absolutely you know uh, the dollar index is actually um pointing down towards uh, our correction zone right now so right now you know, I remember on Friday, you know, if, I, if every day you call for a bottom or a top in the market, eventually you're going to be right, you know. So and the reality is we've had a lot of volatility that came out of nowhere on Friday afternoon and followed through into Monday. We had a big, big, big reversal in the dollar index. You got to remember on Friday morning, the dollar was actually pushing highs. It was looking for a breakout to the upside, not a retraction, you know. So and because of the news that was basically that was put out by the different media outlets was saying that the Fed was going to stop raising interest rates. Well, they're going to eventually, that's for sure. But we know that they're not going to stop raising rates at least for the next two meetings, that's for sure. There's at least two three-quarter rate hikes coming. Jerome Powell has been very staunch and hasn't even said about t he's going to take this foot off the uh, off the gas anytime soon. You know. Now, we know that, yes, next year they should start pulling back where maybe instead of doing three quarter rate heights they start going to a quarter point or maybe they eat maybe they skip one one meeting or two but with the intention of still raising rates like we know that we're coming into that environment but that's still half a year away you know we still have the fed meeting next week and then we have another fed week and uh, fed meeting in december you know so we and this is in the midst of earnings season and a bunch of other things so i think that what you're seeing is a very big knee-jerk reaction by the rumor sell the fact and i would say that probably what you're going to see is like for instance we had a like the dollar index was already getting hit over the last two sessions yields were pressing higher up until yesterday morning you know so now we got a short-term buy signal in the 30-year uh, Treasury bond futures, you know, but that's a counter trend move and it's a perfect setup for going into next week. Yield should pull back as we get into uh, Tuesday, which the markets are going to go flatline in the Tuesday and the Wednesday. You'll probably see a yield, um, the bonds trading another two, three basis handles higher. The dollar index trading around the 109 to 107 area, maybe bot ch churning around in that area. Then what happens on Wednesday? They pull the trigger and then you know what happens? We know that they're going to raise the rate another three quarter point in December. So what's going to happen? You're going to see a big sell off in the bonds a big rally in the US dollar you know and I think that that's probably the way it's going to shake up I would be very cautious right now I think it's a set a rally to sell if you're um, buying into any of these other currencies versus the dollar it's pretty cool man you put the move on you know a daily just going back I mean the moves have been so large steady and you've been talking about it you get a bounce man 
you're nowhere near as in even just talking about Fibonacci numbers jump into the 10 year, right. for instance, on a Fibonacci basis, man, a 382 is almost three full points higher. And that's right. just from the move we had from August going August, September. Right. It's not even October. So that's getting a 382 sure. bounce of a move that's been less than three months old. And you could go right. three points higher. And I'm not saying you, you will because that's almost sure. 114. But that's actually <clears throat> the high as well from earlier this month, which is pretty interesting. Right. Um, sure. The high from 113. What do you want to jump to next, Teddy? Uh, um, the, how about the, the end? end? You want to talk Crude? about what the do you end? want to talk about? <laughs> well, if there's been volatility anywhere, it's been the end. I mean, longs, it, right? longs, longs and shorts have both had to get Oof. gotten chewed up over the last few sessions. I mean, and Friday was indicative of that. And see, this is where I think you can see like where, why we had such volatility on a Friday, you know, because at that point, European markets are closed, Asian markets are closed, only the algos are really on, you know. And this is where AI has, I think, really causes problems with the markets, especially when they're thin. Because, you know, one of the things that AI um, pro programs are dri driven on all these like you know algos is the news they have filters for twitter facebook cnn cnbc all this stuff so when they all of a sudden get this major media outlets broadcasting everywhere the fed is stopping the raising of rates don't you think that influences the algos you know and causes these very big erratic you know erroneous moves that come off only when these things come out you know and i think that that's what's generating and the reason you get this volatility it's kind of like i saw this great demonstration of where ai has a lot of flaws and has a long way to go if you ask ai to, to show you a picture of of of, of a salmon fisherman or a, of a person fishing for salmon you know what they're going to show you they're going to show you somebody on a boat with a fishing pole and then they're going to show you at the end of the fishing pole a piece of salmon that you eat on your plate not a fish you know what i mean like because yeah. it's not there's certain things that it just there's so many other variables that if it's common sense to us that still isn't programmed into ai it doesn't get that or it may never it may never get that because that's a human thing you know so and i think that that's what we're running into with these moves so i would say that you know before you li listen to the news listen to what the other fed share, um people said last week especially two of them that said um they're all for the fed keeping this stance on raising rates and continuing to combat inflation and not let up on it for a while you know so that doesn't mean that they're going to be putting the brakes you know come december i think that this is just a corrective environment that we have over the past couple of days and what's kind of cool is you know we just get a constant stream of data it feels like man we got big earnings coming out of mm -hmm. course but then we get pce this week we get gdp we get fed right. meeting next week and then we get to do all the big numbers again with non-farm payroll we'll get cpi sure. um and like you and I have been talking about, man, those numbers, there's just been all these expectations. Now, maybe they will, mm -hmm. right? Maybe the data will line up and give them the room to, to mm -hmm. pause after they go 75, 50, a quarter or something, which is right. almost like a best case scenario. But that means that we need some big numbers that just have not come in every single month. Right. It's been, you know, CPI is hot. Look at the last two months when the CPI came out, folks. The market just collapsed, uh, let alone we rebounded last time. But there's huge misses on that CPI mm -hmm. number which is pretty interesting. Can you hang with us for this break, Teddy? I want to go over the crew yeah. contract a little bit sure. when we get back, okay? Folks, Sounds stay good. tuned. We're going to be coming back with our man, Teddy Kegstad. And please, we're going to go on break for three minutes. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit of crude. We'll finish up the conversation. Head on over to the front page of TFNN, folks. Try out Teddy's newsletter. Try it for 30 days. You'll be in that room for the webinar tonight. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We're talking some commodities, some currencies, and let's jump right into crude, Teddy. We've got crude accelerating higher today. We're pushing 87 bucks at 86.66. Uh, what type of price action are you looking for this crude contract right now? Uh, I'm watching that $90 level. I think that right now this market's been wedging. We put it in the report uh, this week, you know, looking for a breakout. And I think that if we can get above 90, then we're heading towards that key uh, area of 93.75. And that's going to be a nice little upper end to test. Are we just going to be in a range trade consolidation market here? Are we going to have stability, at least at these higher prices? Because um, if we're going to have that, that's where we're going to run it. We should run into the roadblock. If not, then that means we have higher prices ahead. And I would say we're going to be going back up above 100. You know, So right now, the market obviously has been in a downtrend since, what is it, since the beginning of the summer, since the, I think the yeah. middle of June. Um, but it bottomed out at the end of September, you know. So, and I think that 
right now between the low that was set in September and somewhere up around $93, $93 that's your range trade. So if we're just going to nice. consolidate, that's where we'll be. But at least on an hourly basis and now on an intraday basis, um, on a daily starting as of today, we are breaking out to the upside, meaning we're pressing the wedge. So the market's been wedging you know, this way and this way coming to this point. We're starting to look like we want to break out to the upside. I'm looking for $90 as the key level. I think that's the first step. If we can sustain a trade above there, be cautious selling into it. I think that we could have a breakout to the upside, especially, you know, I mean, things aren't exactly great in the world right now, you know. So and I've been saying, look out for wintertime, you know, especially you got to think that the spreads for the wintertime, they're going to start getting really bullish. And I think that's going to help to lift the pricing also. It's pretty cool, everything that's in flux as a trader, man. And I agree, geopolitically, man, you talk about Russia, whatever you talk about um, China in terms of how that may impact uh, the price of crude. Teddy, we appreciate the time as always, man, the education, and we look forward to the live webinar tonight at 4 o'clock we'll Eastern this afternoon. time. Man. Okay, Absolutely. we'll see you then. Thanks so much, Take Teddy. Take care, guys. Folks, check it out. Tiger Forex Report on the front page TFNN.com. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman up live next. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great Wednesday.